we got up probably to within, I want to say 60 feet, 70 feet. The Holy Father's body was lying in state right in, in, in front of the altar in, in St. Peter. And I could see very well. And so we sh- stood there about 30, 40 minutes praying. And I said my goodbyes uh, to the Pope who had ordained me. And I was very thankful that I was there, that I had the chance to be there. I prayed for that good woman who made it possible for me to be there. And we were finished, it looks like. They were bringing um, some of the sister missionaries of charity uh, had some people in wheelchairs, and they were bringing them up. They were, had a special line, and they allowed them to go closer. But that was it. You know, normal, ordinary people like me couldn't, even the cardinals couldn't get any closer. They had their place on the other side, 50 feet or so away. And it looked like that was that. We'd paid our respects, and we were just about to leave, and two Swiss guards marched up to me. The full medieval regalia with the halyards, and they marched up to me right in front of me, and they stood at attention and saluted. And then they got one on either side of me, and they led me right through the crowd up to the Holy Father's body. They stood at attention, one on either side of me. There was a a pridure, a kneeler there. I knelt down. And I prayed there this far from John Paul with the Swiss guards standing at attention next to me. 20 minutes or so I prayed. I got up. The Swiss guards led me back through the crowd, saluted, and left. Left me wondering what had just happened. You know, I don't really know anybody in Rome, you know, I, as they say in Las Vegas, or I have no juice, you know, <laughs> you know no, no power with, with influential people. Nobody knows me over there. Although I have to say, I was stopped six times at the Rome airport from the gate where I got off my plane to the front door, six different times people recognized me, and they weren't all Americans. Some of them were Italian, and well, anyway, I'm, I'm standing there, and an Italian man one of the ushers at St. Peter, dressed in a tuxedo. He smiled at me and he said in English, I know who you are. <laughs> and I said, you do? He said, we have television in Italy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah we, we, my family watches you on television. He said, that was pretty good what the German cardinals did for you. I said, what? I said, yeah, that was, that was good what the German cardinals just did for you. You know, they, they, they sent the Swiss guard. You know, I heard them talking. I was on the other side. And they swim, that's Father Carapi over there. He, he does good work with the catechism of the Catholic Church. Uh, the German cardinals, one was Austrian, he, but it was Cardinal Schoenborn, who was the primary editor of the catechism. You know, he's the one who put it all together in the beginning. And the other one's now the Pope. And so, as a kindness, uh, as an honor, and I didn't know what had happened, if I hadn't run into that man, I'd have never known. Uh, the, the cardinals dispatched the Swiss guards to allow me to have that privilege, to, to say goodbye to the Holy Father that way. That catechism series, my catechism series called The Teaching of Jesus Christ, is the only thing of its kind in the entire world, in the entire Catholic Church, It is the only thing of its kind. There is no other series with that kind of breadth and scope and depth uh, on tape, on on audio and video, okay? On DVDs, CDs, it's 48 hours, 50 hours video because uh, EWTN added their artistic content. The teaching is all mine, but EWTN put some artistic music and art and so forth. Um, 48 hours on CD, it's the whole catechism. The Catechism of the Catholic Church condensed into 48 hours of teaching. It's used in over 100 countries all over the world. And to this day, after 10 years, it's the only thing of its kind. Why? I don't know. Uh, it's a very humbling thing. But, but sometimes uh, 
God will surprise you. And as unlikely a candidate as you are, uh, as little, as miserable, as sinful, uh, unlikely a candidate as you are, um, God chooses the weak and makes them strong in bearing witness to him. Uh, sometimes it is when we are weak, as St. Paul says, that we are strong. And so it can happen that even a pope comes to know what you've done and who you are. And God gives you a little pat on the head. Because sometimes you think, have I accomplished anything? Uh, has it helped anybody? Um, and so I came home from Rome uh, very much rejoicing and consoled. Uh, but but that, um, that little, that series on the catechism, uh, I'll leave you with that thought. Uh, learn your faith. Um, whether you have a little knowledge or a lot of knowledge, whether you're in kindergarten, whether you're eight years old or 80 years old, you can always learn your faith better. And to learn your faith is to learn about God. The first commandment is to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, and strength. The second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself, out of love for God. When you learn your faith, you're learning about God. You're coming to know God. See, when you study the catechism, when you study the Bible, you're studying Jesus himself. You, you come to know the beloved. And then you enter more deeply through that knowledge into that love, which helps you then to serve him with your whole heart, mind, and strength. So know him, then love him, then you'll serve him, and then as old sister Mildred used to say, then you'll be happy with him in heaven for all eternity.